Sam, welcome. And uh, why don't you start off by ev telling everyone a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Thank you, Adam. Thank you for inviting me along today to join this. I have watched a couple of your other podcasts and some very inspirational stories, so I'm very pleased to get involved. Um, so as you've introduced me, my name's Sam Hawker. I'm Managing Director at Able Care Homes. We've got six care homes in Bristol and South Gloucestershire. They're um, for older people and people with dementia. So each of our homes is relatively small in size. Um, we've got an average of about 16 to 20 residents in each, our largest being 30 residents. So we feel that gives us a really nice family feel. They're a small home, everybody knows each other in the home, all of the staff know all of the residents. Um, we've got family involved in the business and so we've just got that really nice family approach to providing residential care. That's fabulous, thank you Sam. So um, let, let's get straight in. Um, so in turn the awards, I know you've just uh, mentioned how you've just uh, completed a round of those. So uh, fresh in, the, in your mind. So talk me through um, about why you feel internal awards are important for engaging your care teams. Well, we think it's really important to give recognition, praise, reward for people who are doing a really difficult job that's often mm. undervalued and not perceived as, you know, as it is. I think we expect an awful lot from our carers and from our teams in general. Mm. They've got lots of responsibility and um, we just feel it's really important to acknowledge that and give them recognition and to encourage people to want to provide excellent care. Yes. You know, they could, those, those people can lead by example. And with that recognition, hopefully it inspires the whole team to do their very best at all times. Yeah. Fabulous. And, and talk to me if those who've maybe not run awards like this, or perhaps those who have and maybe wanting to change how they've done it previously, talk to me through about how you go about it, how you organise it straight from the very beginning. Okay. So it's evolved into our own internal awards for the last couple of years because we mm. were nominating people for regional awards and national awards. Understood. Uh, yeah. So, and we were having a really good success mm. rate with we, were, we had lots of um, recognition and we went to different award ceremonies and we were able to take a group of people along. We would always sort of get the finalists to come along with us and bring a guest with them to, to share that. And sometimes they would bring family members, but often they'd bring a colleague with them. Um, but we found that was limited to a small group of staff. So once we put them through into the regional or national uh, nomination process, it was out of our hands and the people who did get through might get through to several, whereas other people that were really good weren't getting through at all. And we wanted to expand that to include the whole team. I see. So having um, attended a few of those events, we sort of looked at how they worked and what we liked and what we thought might be a way of making it fit us in a better way. So we decided that we'd take that forward. Um, but we wanted it to be really inclusive with the teams. We didn't just want it to be us as a management team saying, right, we're doing this and this is how it works. So we set up a committee. We got volunteers from within the staff team themselves to sort of join the awards committee so that we could all work together on it and they could have an input. I see. Yeah, that's nice. Um, and uh, I'm curious... Uh, when you say you, you obviously um, participate in external awards and you like some things, uh, what kind of things did you particularly like that you tried to bring into your internal awards? Um, I guess we really liked the aspect of um, it being a really celebratory gala event, you yeah. know, with um, people dressing up for the occasion and just getting outside of what they would normally do. We liked some of the ones that had a real sort of party atmosphere about them as well. So as well as the award process and people will receive a trophy and get that recognition. At the end of that, there was often some music, dancing, things like that too, which always goes down really well. So people sort of have the, it's almost a bit of pressure waiting to see if they've got to walk up onto stage and they're going to get through as a winner or a, highly commended finalist and then once that part of it's done then just enjoy yourself with all of your work colleagues and your friends and family and and just have that part of the celebration too yeah I see and how many uh what's your total um team count 
How many uh, um, members we've got, staff do you have? So we've got around 190 staff altogether working for us yeah. in Able Care Homes. Yeah. And at last night's event that we did, there were 120 of us there. All right, um, fabulous. Yeah, so from within our staff team mm-hmm. and their their fam- some family members, lots of them brought a colleague along as well. So yeah, I see. Yeah, we were able to be you know, really include a, a large number of the team in that. And um, where did you where did you hold the event? We held it at Gloucestershire County Cricket Club. Ah, which very nice. Is local <laughs> to us in Bristol. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a cricket fan, so you couldn't have chosen. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's great. <laughs> uh, and and uh, another cu- a question I have for you on this then. So um, you have around about 190 care team members. So how many kind of awards did you have, and what kind of awards did you have? We had 14 awards in total. We had a highly commended and a winner for each of the categories. And actually in one of the categories for newcomer, we had two highly commended because it was just impossible to narrow it down to to just one. So we had had a a wide range of categories. So we had from um, the most improved care home team, we had um, team player award, Mm. we had... Um, an amazing carer award which had the most um, entries all, of all of the categories yeah yeah uh, yeah we had one for the rising star okay fabulous yeah uh, a volunteer category and then we had a um, management team so oh an ancillary worker so we tried to make sure whatever somebody's role is within the was care setup there was something that they could be entered for right right yeah and how did you go about deciding to make nominations for awards how did that work that worked by us we actually used um, an online survey monkey platform so right. we designed um something for people to fill in and then just kept sharing the link with all of our teams um getting all of the staff to nominate each other and we tried to make it an easy process for them to follow we didn't right. want to make it that they had to sort of write an essay on yeah. each yeah. person yeah um because i think that would have put them off nominating so we just asked for a couple of paragraphs to tell us I why see. they thought that person was yeah. deserving I see. and we actually ended up with 344 nominations wow so, uh, that's, that was that's great yeah, totally amazing yeah um, yeah so, and it was so nice to read them and you know what they were yeah. saying about each other yeah i guess that must have been interesting for you particularly yeah as uh, yeah <laughs> you know, as, as leading from the top so to speak to see what others your your team are saying about others yeah did you find anything find surprising that... in that at all or interesting in particular um I just find that sometimes it's harder. You don't always hear the day-to-day good mm. news stories coming out. It's like being managing director. Sometimes you, know, you obviously hear about any issues that are going on and anything that needs sorting out. And you then hear like some of the amazing stories that have happened. But everybody's doing so much on a daily basis. And that's what really came through from the nominations. And it may be that one one member of staff may have had about five or six nominations from different colleagues and then when you read the whole picture of it put together you really got uh, the essence of that person in their day-to-day work and yeah, that was that was really nice yeah oh, that's great fabulous uh, so it was held at the uh, cricket club and um, did you what i'm just curious what kind of uh so you had like it was a, was it a sit down meal you had or a buffet yeah. or something like that right yeah yeah, yeah we had um the, we chose the cricket club because we were looking we had to find a venue that was large enough right yeah and we wanted somewhere because it's a summer event with outdoor space right yes um so we didn't want to be sort of shut in somewhere we wanted a bit of sort of light and airiness to it as it was, we had rain last night, which was unfortunate, but it didn't dampen the spirits at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's always, there's, always, there's always a likelihood there's rain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, lovely yeah. sunny day again today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but- <laughs> Yeah, so we, so the, you know, just to give you a little um, flavour of the evening, we had a drinks reception um, to start with, yeah. where we had pims and, you know, summer cocktails, right. made that nice and summery. We had a, a magician and a singer while that was taking place, oh, while yeah. people were just mingling and the, the magician was going around and amazing everybody. I don't, 
fantastic. Don't know how he did it. Must be magic. <laughs> I have no <laughs> I other explanation. So. <laughs> 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 so that was, yeah, so that was sort of the start of it and everybody was arriving and, you know, just seeing people out of their no- normal work scrubs and really dressed up. It was, yeah. uh, it was really yeah. lovely to see that. Um, and then we went upstairs and we had a three course meal chosen, voted for by the awards committee, I must say. The ah, cricket okay. club had a nice lot of choices of food and we they all sort of voted for what they thought people would like and oh, yes. came up with the meal choices. <laughs> and I, the staff at the cricket club were amazing. They were excellent. Yeah, so it went so smoothly. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't do that for us. Yeah, um, yeah. And was this a day, day, day time or evening? This in the evening, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we started okay. at six thirty, and we right, yeah. danced until nearly midnight. <laughs> yeah, oh, fabulous. So, yeah. um, it, well, it sounds like I mean, as you say, number of nominations was great. So it sounds as though certainly you were very pleased with how it all went. And uh, yeah, definitely. Would, would you? Uh, are you planning to do this regularly? Is this going to be a yearly thing? I think you mentioned. Yes. Every, every, Bit, yeah, yeah we did it for the first time last year <clears throat> yeah and the mood in the homes sort of in the few weeks afterwards it was just lifted it was it was yeah. so positive yeah um you could just you know you could just feel it as you walked in so definitely an annual event for us going forward yeah and if uh, for next year would you do anything differently would you is there anything you feel you learned from this one that perhaps you would change for the next one do you know, there's not a lot I would change. I mm. I can't immediately think of anything that yeah. I would want to change. But what I am planning to do um, when I get onto my calendar later is just set up another get together with the committee. We'll go and have a coffee somewhere and just have a chat through how it all went what, and how it felt from their perspective. Yes, yeah, I see. And what they think worked yeah. really well and whether they've got any ideas of things that they might change yeah. Um, yeah because it's harder to know because we had a compare for the evening he was very good quite funny mm. as well so mm. they didn't just have mm. to listen to me going on you know? <laughs> 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 <Somebody who> was <laughs> making a few yeah. jokes and uh, yeah. that, that seemed to go down well yeah. but when you're there and you're sort of handing the awards out and you ha- we were asking some of our companies who sponsored them to come up and they came along and they handed over some of the prizes and trophies so that was lovely but I want to now know you know for the team how did they think it went yeah so yeah I, yeah, I think that'll be a valuable insight yeah that's great um thank you Sam well it sounds as though it went extremely well um and so that's the award side, fabulous. Now, uh, at the top of this podcast, we mentioned the, there were some other, you know, as we're talking about team engagement, uh, some other steps or initiatives that you feel have been quite important as part of this care team engagement. You know, it's top of mind, isn't it, for, for most, uh, for all care providers, you know, making sure your care team is satisfied and happy uh, means that um, that's going to reflect on the care for, for residents. So tell me what else you feel has been important important and useful in in this strategy that you brought into able care homes um so yeah we have been doing a lot of work around um the team and making sure Mm. they're well supported and that you know we're a good employer and we're somewhere they want to work and they're happy we started off a couple of years i think about three years ago now actually we increased our pay rate so that we're paying a minimum of the real living wage okay and we've registered as a real living wage employer Okay. And based all of our pay structures around that, which was actually a huge step for us. Every year when we are sort of doing our annual budget review, we're sort of looking at it and thinking, can we keep doing this? Because it's we really want to make sure we can keep doing it. So that's yes. sort of our main sort of focus on setting our budgets. I see. And I just think that really makes the staff feel so much more valued to start with, that they know right. that they're getting that real living wage. Yes. And that actually it is important. They are being recognised. Because they do have lots of responsibilities, don't they? Mm, mm, of course. They're responsible for people's health and well-being and medication. And so that's that's really important to us that we can offer that. Yeah, yeah. So that's sort of been a starting point, really, for increasing the professionalism of the teams and how they feel about themselves. Mm, mm, um, mm. So then building on that, we've also strengthened our senior management team 
We've got um, group managers who look after a couple of the care homes each and oversee them. So the registered manager has got somebody that they can go to for support and help. But at the same time, those group managers also sort of carry out mock inspections and auditing so that we can make sure that everything's like keeping on track where it should be. We've um, got our training manager who works very closely with them as well. We've got catering managers. So we've just, you know, we've tried to make sure that from the very top, that structure is in place so that then we can support people to come up through and that they've got some career pathway too. A lot of our promotions are all internal. We try not to recruit senior people from outside of the organisation. We're really able with having the six homes when opportunities come up. We've got staff who are progressing well and want to take the, that next step on their career i see yeah that's fabulous great yeah so, um, um, yeah. yeah and that's wonderful and uh, anything else you feel that's been particularly uh, useful yeah we've um so just building on what i was saying we sort of formalized yeah. that a bit more now because yeah, we can see. see that at the moment we've got a really strong group of staff who are doing well so we've created a management development program ourselves. Ah, okay. So um, where we've got people who are wanting to progress and maybe we haven't got an opportunity for them right now, we're implementing training and group meetings and discussions just to get them ready for when that does mm. occur and then they can take that forward because what we don't want to happen is to sort of have our best talent then looking elsewhere for something because they're sort I of see, thinking yes, right, of I've, I've been you know and staff from any level can enter that so maybe it's a care assistant and they want to move on to be a senior or a senior who would like a deputy position going forward so um, anybody in the company is welcome on that program and getting mm. them ready for the next step because mm. we keep hearing about career pathways in social care and how they don't I don't know, people perceive that they don't exist, but we think, well, they can exist. You've just got to create that. I see. That. That's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. And um, on that side, are you obviously, you know, you've been in the set for a long time uh, are, and you've got good experience. Are you able to see quite quickly if someone's like really good and has got really the right attitudes and values and you feel like, you know, I just want to keep this person for as long as possible? Is that, do you ever have that sentiment? Yes, definitely. Mm, I think that's mm. really apparent with some people. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It comes through very strongly. Mm. You, you know, some it's different for everybody, isn't it? So some yeah. people join us um, on college placements mm. or you know work experience, and then they come to work for us as a carer. And it might take them a little time to grow into that position. Yeah, um, and then you can. That's really nice actually we've got some seniors carers now who'd started off as college placement oh, really? um, yeah. volunteers coming yeah. in and some I would say some of those were quite obviously very young when they first came mm. didn't have that confidence yeah and then just as their confidence has grown and then their desire to sort of take on more responsibility and to to um, really do all they can to make the care of, for the residents the best it can be. Mm, mm, that's so, fine. Um, yeah. yeah, and we really encourage sort of innovation from the teams and, you know, share your ideas with us and we're always willing to try things. Mm. Mm, that's fabulous sam thank you so much for sharing all of these insights and uh, expertise is there anything that we've not covered that you feel uh, would be worth covering um just trying to think now no i think really it's just building up that strong caring team and having care mm. for each other mm. and then they that enables people to care for our residents in the best possible way yes so it, it yeah. all does come back to that sort of um family feeling about the homes and the way things work together and people wanting to be part of that just wanting to be part of that able care homes family for us happy staff means happy residents so sure sure you well, just that just shines through <laughs> Well, that's great. Well, that, that's, I think, is, a, is the best place to end this episode. So, Sam, thank you so much for uh, being on the Care CEO Success Stories podcast. I've got one one more element just to, to mention. If anyone wants to get in touch with you, perhaps you know, about the awards, maybe just talk with you a little bit more or get another insight, how might they best be able to get in touch with you? The best way would probably be to send me a message via my LinkedIn profile. Yeah. 
So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd welcome that. And if anybody wants to know any more, message me via LinkedIn and uh, we can have a chat. That's perfect. Thank you, Sam. Once again, thank you so much for being on the uh, KSEO Success Stories podcast. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for inviting me. It was nice to talk to you.